How's he doing? Welcome back. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Um, we're at day 333. 365 days towards racial change. My name is Tomlins Nyback. Pleasure to be with you. Listen, um, how you doing uh, today? Uh, we are navigating, making our way through handling the coronavirus. Uh, as Americans, uh, it would be nice if, if you are um, outside of America watching these videos. I'm honored that you would take the time. Um, I'm not excluding you if I don't mention you where we're just talking about the experience of Amer uh, black American people here in the nation and um, uh, the, the impact of racism, history, you know, we're looking at slavery, talk a lot about economics, we're going to talk a lot about some uh, uh, economic models, um, approaches to economic possibilities for black people in this episode. Um, What are we talking about? You know, I did a big block of these today. This will be my last one today. Um, I finished school. I, well, I finished a semester of school, and anybody who had um, education in 2020, you know, uh, had an experience, right? <laughs> you know, uh, a guy like me who uh, has some insecurity about instruction, you know, I, I prefer a level of intimacy and access to my instructor, physical access. And I got blown to shit with this virus. But it happened to everyone. And, um, uh, you know, so, so we know that experience. But, we're, you know, we're going to look at history. And, you know, history has... It's trends, you know, and just like the stock market crash of 1929 and all that stuff, we're going to see uh, education, health, economics, <laughs> you know, business, politics. And we're going to, it's going to be going along, maybe trend down a little bit. But at, at 2020, it's going to just fall off a cliff. <clears throat> you know, it's going to run out of space. And it's, it's, it'll just be a flat line on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> and then it'll trend back up. Yeah, education, health, economics, politics, everything got touched. And it just fell off a cliff. Terrain wreck. So that's what we're dealing with. And um, you know, it makes me wonder where you're at. And this, is, uh, this was around the whole planet, too. This is a great opportunity. Today we're going to be talking about some, some strategies. Now, we've been talking about some of this stuff all year, or, you know, previous 300 episodes. Uh, to some degree or another, and uh, or we, we use uh, Dr. Anderson's uh, insight and research to talk about a lot of these things, but we didn't foresee a global pandemic. You know, and th th this is very important because, you know, until this one, we were able to relatively keep things under control. The, our present administration started dismantling stuff. <laughs> and it's, it's part of it's because our leader has just such a business mind. He's like, you know, if something is, something appears to be using resources unnecessarily, very business-minded, right? Um, then it's got to go, right? And um, 
with health, it's not the kind of thing you just turn off that machine and when the cri if a crisis comes, you're going to have a rapid uh, deployment of the apparatus. No, it's all messed up. So, you know, the, pre the present administration we got has, has got to own that, has got to own that. If it doesn't, so I'm not going to go waste my time with politics uh, because the ad administration knows it messed up by tinkering with <laughs> with stuff that decades of administrations have put in place because they know the world is crazy. The businessman didn't quite grasp that. You know, but uh, what I was saying, like, in the past, H1N1, Ebola, some of these other viruses, okay, God, okay. America had the apparatus in place to keep that stuff at bay. Um, but when the administration tinkered with and, uh, you know, threw out and um, oppressed naysayers and, and all this crazy stuff, it happened and here we are. You know, it's like me. You know, people told me, don't mess with cocaine. You'll get hooked. I had a great fiance at one time. She, um, you know, she, she gave me one more chance and one more chance. And she, where is she at? She gone now. <laughs> right? You know? And uh, don't play with fire. You get burned. Don't do that. Da -da -da -da. And, and hard heads just keep marching right on <laughs> and get what they get. You know? So uh, what we didn't see is that now that this pandemic is inside the borders of the United States, it's been a great uh, national and global reset to economies. And I, I hope other oppressed people in the world are taking advantage and not waiting for their regimes to get power under them again. You know, there are some places that are just have such an iron rule that it's still a long ways off for some of the oppressed people, women, I think about, um, to get it together, to, to be competitive participants in their lands. You know, I'm glad I wasn't born a woman in the Middle East, you know. Yeah, that, that's some hardcore stuff going on. America's had its uh, a great reset. And so we got an opportunity now. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll dispense with uh, checking in on white folks and black folks and brown folks and yellow folks. Today, we'll just get right into it. Um, you know, I do wonder, you know, real quick, you know, what has this virus done to economics for white people and the, the, the future understanding for white folks? You know, um, this weekend, a lot of things are going to be opening up and, you know, we're, we're going to, America is so revved up on its commerce and economy. Sports is starting to, you know, trying to get going again and all that. But at least it's going to be a race this weekend. I think I saw a good, a neat um, advertisement. I love auto racing. I don't go to the parks or anything, so it's okay for me, but you know, and I know that's a big revenue stream cut off for people that can't go there. So, so you know, these white owners of these big raceways and ballparks and stuff are, are just, you know, going nuts, nutsoid, <laughs> because um, their summer revenue concerts 
you know, big uh, events have just been stifled. So um, that's another thing to that they've got to navigate. So that, that's what we're, you know, what we're working on, what we're struggling with for white folks. Black folks, you know, believe it or not, this is a time to invest. Oh, the stock market. No, it's it, the stock market's crippled. I, I have some money, but I got to hold on because I'm in transition. I can't make a, a move yet. But uh, if you understand the stock market, if you understand trends, like white folks ain't going to let this thing lay fallow for too long. It's going, they're going to get it going again. And you want to you want to have that money into a startup, a new thing, whatever. Excuse me, and go ahead and make that investment, take that risk, make that move. I don't have any suggestions, but I know that the time is right and right for. Um, you to make an investment today in 10, 15 years down the road, you'll be like, man, I'm glad I put some money in the stock market in the, in the spring, summer of 2020. Yeah. I'm about to make that move. I just got to do some research. All right, let's get to it. Uh, now that we're back to kind of an economic conversation. Uh, I'm informed to do this uh, work motivated by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson. Easy to find. He's here on YouTube. Um, and I'll show you some other places where to uh, you can find it. But I bought three of his works and we referenced these works. We're going to reference one of these works today, as a matter of fact. A Black History Reader, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask, Black Labor, White Wealth, Search for Power, and Economic Justice. And Dr. Claude Anderson's National Plan to Empower Black America Powernomics. You can find Dr. Anderson at powernomics.com as well. If you have this book, uh, turn to page 155, Industrialization, and we're going to be going over some of the points in that. Behind me, you'll see the hashtag us to symbol, and uh, you find black women uh, support one another, having their voice in there. Check out Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F, for Black Facebook kind of a black Facebook experience. If you can't find your flavor, uh, your proper voice here on the World Wide Web, do what I did, start your own. There are plenty of sites where you can dump some video, talk to yourself, get it off your chest, ease your mind. It doesn't have to be racism. Uh, you can do the politics, cooking, um, review television shows, or whatever. Oh, let's see. Um, you check out, if you have a business mind, check out Dr. Boyce Watkins at the Black Business School, theblackbusinessschool.com. Um, check out uh, Tyrone Gregory, self-employed tax guy. He'll help you um, with uh, tax uh, solutions and business solutions as well. Because we, uh, we're in an economic time and economic focus. Uh, if you can, get this book or, or read reviews. I know there's maybe some YouTube uh, excerpts on this. The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. Get an understanding of economics, how America works, and why it works the way it does. And finally, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, a fictional account of slave life informed by genuine events. I please read that book and uh, see what that's all about. I'm not, well, it's hard to find a person who's read, who's not read that book. Let me just say, people have, have mystified that book and they, they don't know what it's about. I did, I thought it was a little old book, but this is a novel. <laughs> something to be uh, to pay attention to. <sighs> Industrialization. Uh, and, you know, uh, 
Doc Randerson, his burden isn't so much to change the face of racism, to to get racists to stop their racism. Now, I don't find that um, in those three books I just showed you, we're in Poweronomics today, Dr. Anderson's voice and his plan is not to change racism. That, that's not, I don't think that's even possible. What Dr. Anderson, uh, I think he's try, his burden is, is to get us to understand racism, to understand the elements, the components. Then we have a fighting chance at resisting it, um, at um, responding to it properly. And that, no matter who you are, I, I, like I said, I have a lot of white friends. I love my white friends. I do. They they actually give me resources sometimes. I love my white friends. So it's not all white people and stuff like that. And the racism is, it's an entity supported, uh, in this case, sometimes by white people, mostly. So, but Dr. Anderson's he what is what I find mostly evident in his. Um, or his resources is the economic message that black people are not participating. We're not competitive. We're not have we don't have access to the wealth and resources of the nation. Um, not like uh, the power group, mostly white, and other groups that we've talked about. Um, all the groups that know how to coalesce, be unified, and um navigate their own differences so that the entire group can rise up and be competitive and successful. We, we don't see that in, um, necessarily in black folks. We could. So Dr. Anderson's um, burden, his plan, his, his commentary is going to center, center around being to deliver education on how black people can be um, competitive, uh, more fruitful in the nation. Um, how we can be, uh, uh, engage in more ownership in more, um, some more tactics to, to preserve our resources, to get more from our resources, things like that. So forget about changing racism. You know, not not only reflect. Um, I don't think I've been uh, over these three hundred some episodes an advocate of ending racism. You know, we, we just I recognize it as a component of you know some some issues that bear heavily on my life. So Dr. Anderson's um, message uh, today, we're looking at page 155, industrialization and stuff into um, into America. Um, you know, it, it isn't about being racist or ending racism. It's just simply about a strategy, an economic strategy for success for black folks. Um, so to top it off, something we, we've, we've touched on periodically, sprinkled uh, throughout. You, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but uh, first, uh, put your mind back in the, uh, the orientation and the attitude of vertical integration and ethno-aggregation. not going to go into a big thing, but just for review. The vertical integration is the control of uh, the resources, the ideas, uh, uh, the product, you know, taking that product and controlling its raw materials, ideas, until you get a finished product 
that you're taking to market. And that is what you want to uh, keep in mind with vertical integration. Uh, a good illustration is, is say we're a car manufacturer. Well, we want to control the rubber for the tires, the, the ore uh, to, to make the, the engine, the, uh, the electric. Um, we have our own research and development department to handle uh, computerization, chips, and electricity in the engine. We, we want to own paint manufacturing, or at least have a piece of that, and write up commission on sales as those cars go out the door, right? That's vertical integration we, from the ground on up is controlling. So we want that under black control. Ethno aggregation is to have all of that process work within the ethnic group. Now, you could think um, plenty of groups have that, um, uh, Jews and Italians may be um, well acquainted with jewelry and um, clothing and um, find other groups uh, have control of alcohol, you know, in general, right? Um, and, you know, black folks were, were so consumerized. Dr. Anderson had a plan to, to, to sell fish and have this big fish production thing, uh, you know, I think he was too, sometimes I diverge from Dr. Anderson, and he was a little too vocal, but he was very excited about it. But see, the other groups, they don't advertise, yeah, we're going to do this for all the white folks, blah, 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 blah. and we're going to have all the Jews who would come in there, and we're going to bring all the, the Muslims, you know, we don't. They don't do that. Other groups don't do that. Black folks are the only folks that advertise and get all uppity and flashy about what they're doing about the business. We should be a little more succinct and private, right? Because, you know, when, when I'm excluded from advancement at my job, it's that the, the white people are running around the plant saying, oh, we're keeping the white folks in charge, you know, that, you know, they just subtly resist my advancement, maybe do some stuff off camera and whatnot, but they're not out in public talking about um, how they are strengthening their group. They, ju they just act. So, you know, I think Dr. Anderson was a little, you know, all his, his motive was dynamite. It just implementation had some had some uh, had some issues you know, if, you know if I had the resources and infrastructure I I think I could have pulled that off in a different way but he's a good guy we're referencing him here we love you dr. Anderson um, yeah, so, so that's your vertical integration, ethno-aggregation. Ethno Listen, and black folks are hundreds of years behind in this. Uh, we, we are, our numbers are almost non-existent numerically. Um, and we don't, are the black folks are, are not in the culture of control, management, success, competition. Right, I mean, white people have been always there, always, in the beginning of America, and on the planet to a degree, right? White folks, you know, just as always kind of been in that space. Now, um, black folks need to, need to understand some things as we come together on this point that we do. Now, the industrialization is it's almost a misnomer. Remember to read the description. I put, I put more detailed ideas, sometimes different stuff in the description, but they complement. Industrialization kind of uh, 
think of it this way: there, there's um, processes of um, you know economic cycles. Um, gathering raw materials, and this has a, a very much a, a vertical integration flavor to it. Gathering raw materials, uh, processing and all that, and your, your research and development, um, and, and kind of an industrial, I'm talking macro time periods, large time periods. And like America, America, where you know, there's raw materials, and there's processing, industrialization, and all that. So America has this cycle. So Dr. Anderson's industrialization is proper, but we, we gotta, we're going to turn that a little bit, turn the clock forward a little bit, because after industrialization and some of the mechanics of, of resources, and handling resources, comes... Um, you know, more of your information stage and more of a, you know, managing information, handling the, 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 the technology in such a way that it's, it's runs you like you turn the machine on and now you manage it is all. So we're not necessarily relying on industrialization, like building businesses and all that. But, you know, like right here through the computer, we're learning how to um, use our technology and our information to move those products and things around and not so much caring about uh, building buildings and uh, landscaping, golf courses, and some some of that stuff, you know, handling, uh, digging ditches and stuff. We're we're a little bit beyond that. Um, so we're into information and handling uh, things like that now. So th this is where there's opportunity for black folk because the internet is not as racist, you know, I'm sure it still is, and I'm, I'm not talking about overtly racist websites and things like that, like a white supremacist, I'm talking about, you know, as you try to, as you're going to move your commerce, uh, move yourself forward economically, there's less racial resistance, uh, because um, maybe if you do put your picture on your um website, you know, it's up in the corner somewhere. People are generally coming for the quality more of your work now and not it's not like like me, a fairly large, like overweight black man at your door trying asking for work, wanting to sell my labor to you. You know, you can look at me physically and decide whether or not you want to engage, but the internet is it's more there's more layers so it, it's a little less racist prone than uh, actually physically being in the space you know, uh, I'm in this building now and uh, there's people are doing some roofing up there all Spanish right you know the, our, our Spanish Hispanic brothers and sisters you know, crashed into the uh, building trades and, you know, are succeeding and excelling, right? So it's, it's tough for me. I, I would have to be um, very good bilingually. And, you know, I got a B in Spanish, but I'm not trying to, you know, if I started dabbling as a hobby, maybe it could, it could be something someday, but I've got some other interest right now. But if I went to an employer with that demographic going on, sure, they would. Um, they might even hire me, but I'm going to, you know, 
have to work and navigate the language. Well, the internet uh, kind of gets around that. You know, there, there are translation stuff, uh, software right on the internet now. You just got to be able to access the web. Uh, so we're in, a, we're in a different time zone right now. Uh, so I don't want to go over time, but I want to hold you, hold you uh, hostage. Uh, but this video goes along with the description. Please read the description. You know, it'll talk about America being the economic hub of the world and all this stuff. And the opportunities for black folks is we, we don't, we, we just have to master our laptops here, right? And we've got a good chance at succeeding. It's, it's a direction I think I'm, I'm going to go in myself. Give it a go. Uh, because the blue collar world um, doesn't really want me around anyway. But that's another long story and I'm not going to hold you hostage. As day 333 out of the way. Moving right along. I'm Tom Lins and I back. Of 365 days toward racial change, come back again and spend some time together.